Thank you for tuning into Higher Rock Education. How much does a Pepsi cost in your area? Is the price higher or lower than a Coca-Cola? Chances are they cost the same. The soft drink industry is an oligopoly. An oligopoly is a market structure with a few companies that dominate their market. The managements of companies and oligopolies are reluctant to decrease their prices to gain sales and attract new customers. Why? Because they fear their competitors will respond by lowering their prices to protect their market share. Following a price decrease, a company may increase sales in the short run, but the gain will probably be short-lived after the competing companies match or even exceed the price drop. Economists refer to this as a price war. Companies in an oligopoly generally avoid competing with price. Instead, companies compete with product differentiation. Typically, companies in an oligopoly invest heavily in marketing their products to build brand loyalty. Oligopolists contain a few dominant companies. Typically, the largest four companies in an oligopoly control over 40% of the market. This means that the behavior of one can affect the entire market. For this reason, companies in an oligopoly watch each other very, very closely. Most of the leading companies in an oligopoly are very profitable. Why wouldn't other companies enter an industry if it's profitable? In an oligopoly, there are huge barriers to entry. A barrier to entry is an obstacle that impedes potential competitors from entering an industry. Imagine the investment required if a company tried to enter an industry with, where four other companies dominated that industry. Normally, the barriers are economical, but the economies of scale are such that a large number of goods or services would need to be produced before a profit could be realized. Years of losses may be required prior to selling enough of a good or service to achieve a profit. The dominant companies would protect their turf and fight to retain their market share. This means that price wars and added sustained losses. Imagine your company may be considering entering the automotive industry. First, huge investments are required to build plants and purchase the equipment required to manufacture cars. However, this investment may be small when you compare it to the money needed to build distribution channels and market your cars to the public. The trust and support of distributors must be earned to sell your new brand of cars. Mechanics need to be trained. Most importantly, it may take years to gain consumer confidence. Consumers who like the car may not purchase it because they fear your company would not survive, making parts and service much more difficult to secure. Clearly, the barriers to entry are very high in the automotive industry. But oligopolies compete. But decisions are made by one company in the industry affect the decisions made by all the others. New technologies may provide a company with such a great advantage that it puts others out of business. For example, BlackBerry was at the height of the smartphone industry when the technology to send emails over the phone was first developed in the 1990s, but they failed to keep up with their competition and fell out of favor. Oligopolies invest heavily to build brand loyalty. Normally, advertising emphasizes the attributes of a product rather than its price. Cereal companies market their taste, health benefits, or perhaps a toy in a box. But rarely do you see an advertisement for a cereal company that mentions price. Soft drink and food companies promote their taste and social appeal with scenes of popping open a soft drink can at a party. Detergents peddle cleanliness and smell rather than their price. If companies are reluctant to compete on price, then how do they set their price and output? Ideally, from the oligopoly's perspective, oligopolies should price like monopolies. Production should occur where marginal revenues equal marginal cost. The demand will establish the price at a higher level. However, oligopolists fear a competitor will reduce its price to gain market share. So how can this be avoided? Collusion. It may be relatively easy to reach an agreement between a few companies, but 
collusion would be very difficult in an industry with a lot of companies like a monopolistic competition market structure. However, in an oligopoly, it would be much easier to reach an agreement on price and the markets the companies would serve. But there's a huge problem. Collusion is illegal. Antitrust laws prohibit discussing pricing or distribution quotas between competitors. But what if one company became the price leader? When it sets its price, the other companies would follow. The price would be set close to where the company's marginal revenue equals its marginal costs. Price leadership is common in oligopolies. It's illegal to collude on prices, so the managements of the companies cannot get together to set a price, but they can and do set a price independently and follow the lead of a competitor. Oligopolies differ from monopolies. Monopolies have one producer. These companies compete vigorously and are keenly aware of their competition's behavior because there are so few of them. They fear price wars, so they compete by differentiating their products in an effort to appeal to their target markets. Most leading companies in an oligopoly are very profitable, but high barriers to entry normally dissuade other companies from entering the industry. To learn more, please visit our website for our free economics lessons at www.higherrockeducation.org. All our lessons include text, interactive exercises, review questions, and a related scripture lesson. Thank you.